Hey there, Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan, and we're looking at a 2007 GRB Impreza STI. This is the JDM version of it. One of the coolest rear wings that I've ever seen on this one. And then an uh, EJ20 engine. Now you might notice the engine is not running properly at the moment. It seems to be running on just three cylinders consistently. I can't get it to run on four cylinders at the moment. This one's likely going to have to go off to repair. We've spoken to the auction and the auction may allow a claim, but may not allow a claim. Actually, you know what, to be honest, the auction will rarely allow a claim, just like an insurance company will try to skedaddle out of any of their uh, responsibilities. They told us already that this one here is because it's over 10 years old, because it's over 100,000 kilometers, many things it doesn't qualify for for a claim. We don't know what the issue is, but I'll give you a little peek here at what it looks like. And then it stalls from time to time. So something needs to be repaired. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it is just uh, like a bum coil or something like that. Maybe a bad spark plug, but I will say that the oil is extremely bad. Um, the oil is not only low, but it's also a pasty feeling. And yes, I did stick my fingers in there. I, I got the auction inspection sheet here. This one's going over to Canada. I'll go over that auction inspection sheet. They didn't mention that the engine is having misfiry problems. It could have been completely fine at auction, but the person who went to pick it up from the auction on our behalf ended up not driving it here because they said it wouldn't idle properly. And so this is an unfortunate risk of when you buy a car from auction. Of course, there's many benefits of buying a car from auction, but this kind of thing can happen from time to, from time, to time. And you have to be okay with it. It's part of the wholesale process. And so while you get the benefit of buying cars at the same cost as the dealers do, you also have to put up with the same risk that they go through in having cars that show up and need more work than you think that they need. Now, I don't know what this needs, and I don't think it can ship to Canada in the way that it is right now because it stalls a lot. While you can restart it again, I don't know if it's safe to drive something that's running on three cylinders like that, especially with the oil being so low, there may be some continuous damage that might accrue in the vehicle over time. Now, disclaimers aside, let's take a look at the condition of the vehicle outside of the engine. And mechanically, besides the engine, everything appears to be pretty good. Um, there is no contamination with the coolant or the oil with each other and so no head gasket issues that's not what it is um, but i do wonder if there might be some compression issue because when i went to start it for the first time it went uh it made a v -v 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 kind of sound before as i went to start it kind of in the same way that a car does when a valve is bent or something like that so there is some possibility that there's a bent valve or something I don't know if it's an interference engine but the timing belt was changed at 125,000 kilometers in 2018 and I will go over a couple of things here there's a zero sports deflector here that allows more air to go through the radiator kind of a small little upgrade and then I think this is just for beauty it is beat rush brand and then we have an HKS racing suction with a little window which is kind of neat um, you will get uh, some cooler air inside the cordoned off air intake there, which is pretty cool. Stock STI strut tower brace there, and then HKS adjustable suspension. Big intercooler, and I gotta say, this is my second time ever selling one of these GRB Imprezas, but the first one I actually did a report on. And so, quite interesting to me to take a look at this, indeed. An aftermarket HKS blow-off valve as well. These are things that weren't mentioned by the auction inspector um, or the seller. So a little bonus there to have these bits, the blow-off valve, the air intake, the timing belt wasn't mentioned. Good things. Okay, the first Impreza that has struts instead of a hood prop. And uh, this intake is huge. I've seen these cars driving on the streets. I never knew how big that air intake is. 
Like it goes deep in there and has cool little fins. It looks great. Okay, now the vehicle's really dusty. It took a while to get to us. It's kind of dusty season right now. And so please bear with that. Especially if you take a look at this, you can see all of the little places that I touched it. Looks like the paint condition is rather good, but I, because it's dust, like here I just wiped all of the dust off. The car does look like it needs a proper polish. Can't have a good look, there we go. Okay, so we knew this had idle problems because we heard about it, so I got a little mark there. The person uh, who bought this wanted to know if it has suspension exhaust brands. Both are HKS, and the exhaust is lovely. Oh, and let's have a quick look at that wing. I adore this wing. Very WRC looking. It's aggressive. It doesn't block your view too much out of the back. Of course it does by some, but it didn't look too annoying. Has a very aggressive flap on the top. And uh, those fins, I'm totally digging that. And then in the back, you've got an aftermarket diffuser down here with a similar kind of fin setup. And aftermarket exhaust from HKS. And it sounds pretty nice, but this is still on three cylinders. You also have an upgraded rear sway bar, which is really going to help on the Imprezas because they have a bit of an issue with uh, understeer, and that'll help with that and an aftermarket diff, uh, like rigid diff mount, which really helps a lot. I don't think the back has been upgraded, but that might be for the uh, subframe mounts. And then a beautiful looking, rather new looking HKS suspension. I don't know which HKS brand that it is because you can't read it from here and you can't see it from here. Okay, back to the auction inspection sheet here. And uh, it's an Octory 3.5B, 156, 680 kilometers, makes it kind of a little bit on the high side, but that can really get you a discount off of the prices. It really is the mileage that dictates the price that you pay, not so much the condition. So sometimes I like to target a higher mileage car that is in good condition to get a good price on that. It's a six-speed manual, alloy wheels, power steering, power windows, TV, Navi, and airbag. The sales point here says... Uh, digital TV tuner, original optional Navi with TV toll collection box, and uh, mm, Xenon headlights, smart key. Okay, and then he says right rear power window doesn't work. It actually did for me, so I'm not sure. There might be like an on and on again, off again problem with it, but it was fine for me. Seat wear and stained. The passenger seat is stained. The driver's seat is good, and these seats are pretty nice. I've always liked Impreza seats. I'll show you when we get to the interior. So interior wear and dirty, aftermarket suspension, air filter, and exhaust. Okay, the inspector found that, but the seller didn't say anything about it, which is a little bit weird. You can usually expect a bit of a higher price with a little bit of aftermarket parts because it excites people a little bit. Uh, underside surface rust, it looks fine to me, nothing to worry about. Door, mirror, and wheels scratched, shallow scratches. Now their report here says A2 on the front bumper, I'll show you that. A2 on the roof, it's actually kind of bad. And the rest of it is okay. AU2 over here, it's mm, not so bad. There are, this one here is a little bit bigger. The AU1 should really be an AU2. And then there's a, an area of rust that the auction inspection inspector should have seen and didn't. And that's right here. It looks like the front bumper bottomed out on something and cracked some paint here that allowed some moisture in. So there's a little area here it is an area that you are prone to getting rust on a lot of cars, but because this is my first time with the GRB version of the Impreza, I don't know if they're extra prone or this is something you need to watch out for, but it's something that really needs to be repaired, and it is a shame, and I'm sorry about that. You also have a little bit of this bumper not lining up properly anymore. Probably happened at the same time, and it's the same case on the other side, too. Okay. So let's do a quick once around of the car. I, I know people are polarized on this because the Impreza went from being a sports wagon and a sedan into being a hatchback from this generation. And I remember a lot of purists, and this is always the case when there's a big change, they poo-pooed the idea that the Impreza is going to be a hatchback instead and they're not gonna do a sedan version. And they ended up breaking down and then coming out with a sedan version, but I believe it might have only been in North America or something. Yeah, I really need to brush up on uh, my knowledge on these, but 
I gain all of my knowledge from physically looking at all of these cars and thousands of cars at this point. And because it's my second time, I haven't spent enough brain power thinking about it. Gone are the days where for fun I can look at cars. I <laughs> spend eight plus hours a day looking at cars for my job. So when I get home, reading about the GRB Imprezas is not really on my uh, to-do list, especially with three kids now. It looks like a good car though. And I think that hatchbacks are great. Hence why I bought a bunch of them. I have the Lupo hatchback there and these are secret cars, so don't tell anybody. And one of my favorite all-time cars ever is this. It is so much cooler than you think it is. Hatchbacks, they win. And they win races because there's less metal there, so less weight can be good aerodynamically. I think a sedan is maybe a little bit better, but a hatchback can be fine, especially with daddy's wing on there. So cool. And I think it was kind of a, a decision that not everyone in Subaru wanted to make, but might have been made for rally sport reasons. Especially since the Evo was at the end of its life at this time too. So I'm just showing you, it's got some carbon fiber fins on here. They are real carbon fiber, but they're faded. Peeling on the headlight there. Got a little scratch there. Some discoloration in this section. And then the front bumper's A3 is down here. Okay, set of fog lights down here. Okay, there's also an LED light in there, the city light, and then some peeling on this one as well. Okay, the body has a few minor scratches like this in various places. I'm not gonna point them all out because I already did in the side panel check video that comes along as a companion with this video. But if I see any, I'll just quickly point them out like this one here. You're not seeing big dents in the sides. Oh, and take a look at this. You get a fender vent. This actually helps you with front end lift. It is a serious aerodynamic part of the car that's actually functional, as is this piece here, which is your air curtain piece. The idea is that the wind comes from here and then allows it to wrap around the side without getting caught up in this area. Inside the wheel well is a high pressure area, hence the vent here that lets that pressure out. Um, the high pressure area doesn't like to deal with the low pressure air coming around the car. So if you've got this, it helps the air to connect. At least that's the idea. A lot of modern cars, even non-sports cars, have that because it prevents lift, gets you better fuel economy, gets you better performance. Look at this, there's heaters for the windshield wipers. Cool. So coming down here, I think you're pretty good in side panels, which is good. Subarus are known to be thin metal and prone to denting and prone to scratching. This area here, um, it looks like it may have taken on a lot of little chips in there you might have to do some paint work. It's hard to tell because the car is dirty at the moment and some of that might be embedded in the paint stuff that you can take out. And so it really needs a proper clay bar. But if you feel along this edge, there's a roughness to it. And this, this part here is all plastic and it's there to guard exactly what has happened here. Because the STI comes out like an extra few centimeters compared to the regular version of it, you can actually see back here see here so it comes out approximately that far it means that you've got an area jutting out that's just going to catch all of those rocks that uh, get flung up from the front tire yeah let's have a look again at this Ooh, i love it okay and then here's the other part that i said was an au1 but was maybe a little bit bigger than i would have liked for an au1 Looks like somebody hit this and then they touched it up with touch-up paint and they didn't do a fantastic job of that. Okay, I'm digging the exhaust. Once you're running on four cylinders, I bet it sounds awesome. The rear wiper's been removed, of course, you can't use it with this. And this area here, it may have, a, inside the car came with a little piece of fiberglass. I'm not entirely sure. I hid it under here so that it can shift with the car. I'm not sure what it is. It kind of looks like a roof scoop, but then it's got an area to mount what looks like a light should go in there. So maybe this, like originally would like clip on like this, but that doesn't look like that's the way it should go. But if it goes this way, then is it for here? 
There, that's where it's for. Aha, I figured it out. Oh, it looks good there. Well, I'll hide that under the seat and then you can get a little fiberglass thingy. Okay. Where are we? Yeah, rear wiper's been removed. Small price to pay. It has a stupid thing on the top. I'm not a big fan of most, come on, most car accessories because a lot of them do this. You've got the part, you're excited, you spent, you know, $40 on this piece, you put it onto your car, and then after five years, it looks like it's 15 years old. Unfortunately, it's a big thing. Uh, I gotta show you the trunk, because there's a strut tower brace in the back here. Again, a rear strut tower brace, very important for a car that is kind of front wheel drive. I know it's a four wheel drive car, but it drives similarly to a front wheel drive car in how it understeers. A rear brace is going to help with that because it strengthens up the front. And so your lateral falling over your left, when you go left, the weight is going to shift down because it can't flex. It's going to add some of that to your front left tire, which is what you need for uh, to prevent the understeer. Um, Someone in the comments is going to tell me that's wrong, but this is my understanding of it. This is a Cusco brand. You also have underneath here a space saver spare tire. And you can see that that attaches in like that. Okay. Close that up. Oh, I got to say, really nice hatchback design here. Very easy to put stuff in. Nice large area to put things in. Very easy to live with, probably a little bit better than a Volkswagen Golf, I would say, because the Golf doesn't cut in so steeply here for pretty much every generation. I like it a lot. Okay, on to the interior. Got to show you the driver's side door card. It is rough. Okay, looks nice. Like this card is well designed. The material is made out of is fine. This. Looks like the paint chips off easily. Or the person who owned it previously was really hard on the car. You can see some scratches down here as well. This area here has a blue plastic on it, but you're supposed to peel it off when you get the car, but they never did, so that'll keep that in good condition. It says STI in the middle. The seats. I love the GC8 seats. I love the um, GB... Hmm, for some reason it's not coming to my brain. What's the generation after the GCA? Uh, it's the GGA and GGB for the wagons. The GBA and GBB? That doesn't sound right. GDB. There we go. The GDB versions. That's how my brain works. All the information's in there. It just doesn't like to come out at all times. And when you get to be my age, maybe it's going to be the same for you. Or maybe you're going to be smarter than me. So a little bit of wear there. Anyways, first generation and second generation Impreza STIs. Ah, I love the seats. These ones, I'd have to spend some time with them to see how much I love them. I kind of wish they were a little bit more in your face, but it is a little bit more grown up having them black. The earlier ones had very wild designs on them. These ones are a little bit more subtle. They still have the STI stitching in them. They're not bolstered as much, especially in the bottom. And then they moved over to a synthetic slash uh, vine, um, vinyl, like a half leather, but it's fake leather. Look, um, don't know if I love them as much. Don't think I hate them. I think probably better than most of the Evo seats. Those are the stock pedals on it. Steering wheel's in great condition considering the mileage. This is very, very nice. And a good steering wheel matters a lot in a car. If it's a bad steering wheel, you're touching that every time that you drive it. Push start, not my jam, but it is a thing that people like. It does a little dance thing, I think. Let's just check. And the clutch has to be in. This is not a thing in most Japanese cars, but it is in the Subaru. See, it sounds a bit weird when you start it up. And because of the misfire, it doesn't like to idle very well. So we got an HKS thing here that shows you your boost. It's a boost controller actually, and it shows you a few other things like your RPM and your whatever. Um, again, I'm not a big fan of accessories in your car. Shh, stop it. How do you stop it? Okay. Anyways, now we can see what your Cyber Navi looks like. That's weird, they said it's an OEM one, but this is Cars area. 
these are this one's from 2013, but it is a very nice high-end unit. Okay, the AC works nice and well. It does make a little bit of a weird sound. The air conditioner compressor does. Not like it's not really a broken sound, like something's rattling when it's when it's on. Something to check. Okay. Okay. You can change the center differential to three different settings: auto, less locking, and more locking. And then you have sport and whatever sport sharp is for your manual modes. I don't know what those do. Probably fun to play around with for a few minutes. <laughs> I don't know. Little remote control in there. Lots of headroom. And for a large person, much more room in this than the earlier generations. I wouldn't put the seat in the full back position and that's a rarity for me. So big guys can definitely fit in this car. No bad smells. In fact, it smells nice in here. Like nicer than a car should. And get a little bit of a sticky mark up here. And a little bit of damage there. Maybe a wire used to go through it. Okay, let's get out of the car. Let's pronounce everything Canadian style. Uh, back seats, not bad. But we'll use back a little bit bigger than the generation before it. The GDA, GDB. Too many letters and numbers. My gosh. And there's a grounding kit over here. One of those nonsense things. I guess somebody took it out. Oh, and uh, let's just have a quick look at the rearward visibility. I know whoever is going to be importing this car is going to need to know about that. So, most of the spoiler is up there. You can see under the bottom fairly easily. It does block some of your view, but small price to pay for all that downforce. Or cool looks. Even if, if this doesn't do anything for downforce, it still cool looks. Okay, and uh, just a quick little mention about the tires and the brakes. It's 235s front and back, which is a nice meaty tire. The tires are seven years old, but they're Sports Max summer performance tire, which is pretty good. You get four piston large calipers on the front. They say STI on them in black, uh, not gold like they were in the generation before that. Again, in prices growing up, you don't get the flashy stuff as much you still get all the go. And I'd really like to see how this compares to uh, the GDA, GDB generation, uh, because I like those cars a lot. I think they're a big, good step up over the GC8, despite the extra weight. I'd like to see how that compares to this. Always interested in driving more cars. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you so much, and have a nice day.